Avengers Disassembled, Avengers number 500. The Avengers are having lunch, and Scott Lang and Clint Barton are playing a game. Scott's asking Clint who would be somebody who he would fuck if he could, but he can't have them. Clint says he'd fuck Madame Hydra, aka Viper, and She-Hulk thinks this is disgusting. Janet Van Dyne agrees that he's a pig. Just then, there's a security breach in the back courtyard, so Scott goes back to check it out, and it appears to be Jack of Hearts, who is dead. He just died. And he looks dead. It's not like he's back alive or anything. He, he looks pretty dead, and Scott's like, oh my god, Jack, everything's gonna be okay. Are you okay? And Jack says, I'm sorry. Scott didn't make it. Meanwhile, at the UN, Secretary of Defense Tony Stark is giving a speech about redefining the role of costumed Avengers in the United Nations. But something comes over him, he starts sweating, he gets like irritable, and he starts telling off the esteemed delegate from Latveria. T'Challa tries to calm him down. And Hank Pym is like, Tony, what the hell is wrong with you? And Tony's acting crazy. He's got his blaster pointed up at the Latveria guy. And so they take him out of there. They leave. And he confesses to Wanda that he's drunk. He feels drunk. And she's like, Tony, you drank again. You've been sober for so long. He's like, no, I didn't drink. I didn't drink anything, but I know I'm drunk. Back at the Avengers Mansion, S.H.I.E.L.D. is trying to clean up the mess. They're questioning Jarvis and the Wasp and anyone else who was there. And that's when they all notice the Quinjet coming down and it's Vision. He's flying down and they all see that he's kind of flying really fast and getting really close and not slowing down. And boom, here we go again. Another big explosion happens. Vision walks out of the wreckage and he tells the Avengers, You guys, I'm sorry, I'm no longer in control of my form. I can't explain to you what's going on. This is going to seem like a betrayal for me, but it's not me who's doing this. And after he says that, he spits out five Ultron bombs out of his mouth. And now the Avengers have to deal with this, which they do. She-Hulk gets in there, everyone's getting in there, Hawkeye's shooting them in the face, they're removing the Ultron bots' heads. But She-Hulk is stressed. She's like, what the fuck is happening? Why are we being attacked back to back? Do, are these things related? What is going on? She goes and grabs Vision's body and she picks him up and she demands an answer and she gets into a berserker rage and she rips his form in half. And Captain Britain and Captain America and everybody are like, Jennifer, you don't want to do this. Don't lose control. You're not like your cousin. But it's a little bit too late. She's already lost control. And then we see two voices speaking, asking, is it over? And one says, no, it's not over. Then someone says, we should just kill them and be done with it. And then someone says, and what would that prove? That has no meaning that way. You're so stupid. But the answer is no, this isn't over. Avengers number 501. Tony Stark is in trouble. He's speaking with the president's chief of staff, trying to keep his job as secretary of defense after the little episode that he had at that assembly where he felt like he was drunk and he started telling off the representative from Latveria. The chief of staff isn't hearing it. The president doesn't want to talk to Tony either. They want him to resign from his position. That bad news is only followed up by the alert that the Avengers mansion has been attacked. And so Tony gets over there as soon as he can. And at this point, Jen Walters is still rampaging. No one's been able to calm her down. But Tony comes in and cracks her across the jaw hard enough to knock her the fuck out and buy the Avengers some time to, you know, pick themselves up. Janet Van Dyne's in rough shape. Sam Wilson finds her in the rough and he wants to take her to the hospital. Hank Pym sees them and he decides to just pick up Falcon and walk them over to the hospital so they can get there sooner. Everyone's in really rough shape. Cap's got his shoulder out of place. He's in the hospital. Captain Britain is in critical condition. She-Hulk's locked up. Scott Lang is dead. Vision is, you know, disassembled. And Hank Pym waits with Janet Van Dyne until she wakes up because they can't do any surgery on her until she gets big again. And she's still tiny. She's still wasp-sized. And he's having a really hard time with it, even though they're not together anymore. So the Avengers have a huddle outside the hospital. They're trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Hawkeye thinks it was just, like, an extraordinarily bad day. Falcon speculates that Ultron made have, like, programmed a code into Vision to a setting where if the Avengers ever hit Code White, like they did after Jack of Hearts exploded, that Vision would be programmed to come down and just, like, attack them when they're at their weakest. But that's just speculation, and none of them actually know how AI works, except Tony. Tony knows how AI works. But because of what happened to Tony at the UN, he feels like this has got to be planned, and he starts to tell them that he started to feel drunk. He wanted to tell them this, but Hank Pym bursts in the door, and he's like, Tell them you were drunk! Tell them you were drunk at the UN! And now they don't know if they should trust Tony, because now he's allegedly been drinking, and Hawkeye's dad's an alcoholic, so he has no reason to trust him. But Cap says, I trust you. If you tell me you aren't drinking, I believe you. And Sam Wilson believes him, too. But Tony's actually pissed that Hank Pym and and Hawkeye don't believe him, so he takes off. Then they all get alerts that something's going on at the mansion, so they've got to head back to the Avengers mansion to see what's going on there. 
and every single Avenger is outside the mansion standing there waiting, trying to figure out what happened, trying to figure out how they can help. Avengers number 502. Every Avenger, whoever was, answered the code white call, and they're standing outside the smoldering Avengers mansion, waiting for orders from Captain America. Cap is shocked that they're there, he doesn't really know what to tell them. And Nick Fury is trying to clean up the scene with the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, and he's really pissed off that everybody's here because they're tainting the crime scene. Two Avengers died here tonight, and there's no telling what kind of toxins or radiations any of those Avengers could be emitting. Some of them have weird radiating superpowers, or they're super weird creatures themselves. But the Avengers aren't going anywhere. They're waiting for orders from Cap. They're not taking orders from Nick Fury. Because they also want to know what happened. They want to know, is Scott Lang really dead? Captain America catches them up, but he also tells them, you know what, Nick Fury's right. We really do need to get more information. We need to let them do their investigation. We need to get out of here. And just as he's telling them that, some more bad news comes in. The United Nations has unanimously voted to disavow its relationship with the organization known as the Avengers. And this is really rough on the Avengers because they need a little bit of international backing so that they can effectively protect the planet the way they need to. Nick Fury's on the phone with the people at S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters when he realizes there's an alien alien spacecraft spinning around over their heads. So he asked the soldier on the phone, he's like, do you guys see this on your radar? And the guy's like, no, I don't see anything. He's like, how do you not see this? It's right above our heads. And Peter Parker's like, I see it, if, if that's helpful. And Cap assembles any Avenger who can fly to go up and attack that spaceship. And now everyone's under attack, and Nick Fury is still, he's on the phone with the, one of the soldiers on the helicarrier, and he's like, Look out your fucking window, they're here. The Kree are attacking us, I need detailed info on Kree defense systems and attack patterns right now. And everyone's jumping in on the action, Quicksilver and Cap are doing what they can on the ground, Wonder Man is taking down these single ships, Hercules drags one of the Kree soldiers out of his crashed ship, and the Kree tries to run, but Peter catches him with his webs, and he falls right into Captain America's hands. Cap demands answers. He's like, why is the Kree Armada attacking Earth's soil? And the Kree says it was foretold by the Supreme Intelligence that this day would come, and that this is the end of the Avengers. And any of the Kree that are taken down or weakened are just kind of disintegrated and replaced by new ones. And Nick Fury's like, something is wrong about this. This doesn't make any sense. The Kree have the technology to have destroyed us from outer space. There's no reason they need to be sacrificing soldiers on soil. The Hawkeye's shot in the back, right in the little satchel where he keeps all his arrows, so now he's defenseless. But he says he's not going down like that, so he grabs one of the Kree soldiers and grabs their little jetpack button, and he shoots them up into the thrusters of the spaceship, and that effectively takes the whole ship down. The Avengers are horrified. Clint Barton just sacrificed himself. And as soon as he does that, the Kree just disappear, and any ships that were in the sky just fly away. Some of the Avengers get close to the crashed spaceship so that they can take Hawkeye's body out of there so they can give him a proper funeral, and one of them discovers that the ship isn't made of metal, but they don't know what it's actually made of, it's just, it's not metal. And Nick Fury's like, I'm gonna need some answers now, and out of nowhere, Doctor Strange shows up, and he's like, um, the magics are being abused, I thought you guys would figure that out on your own, but I do have some answers for you. Avengers number 503. Then... Janet Van Dyne and Wanda Maximoff are sitting by the pool, and Janet's a little tipsy, and she decides to share something with Wanda. She tells Wanda that her period was late last month, that she thought she was pregnant with Hawkeye's baby. Wanda said, I didn't know you two were still seeing each other, and Janet's like, we don't really have conversations about our feelings, so we're not really seeing each other. But in any case, Avengers should not have kids. Superheroes should not be allowed to have kids. That should be a rule. And you thought you could have two? And Wanda said, two what? Because Wanda doesn't remember having any kids. They erased those memories from her. They took care of that. She has no recollection of them. And Janet's like, oh no, I spilled the tea. Um, I'm just a little bit drunk. I gotta pee. I'm gonna go pee. And she runs away and Wanda sits there thinking, like, what the fuck was she talking about? Now, Doctor Strange explains to the Avengers that there's a mystic force that's been trying to take them out. He's taken the liberty of casting a handful of cloaking spells around the area so that no one can hear or see what they're doing. And he asked them, um, is there anybody you know that has enough power to orchestrate all of this? And obviously, Cap knows exactly who Doctor Strange is talking about. Then, Wanda visits Agatha Harkness and asks her, why do people think I once had two children? And as she can tell that this startles Agatha, she says, tell me where my children are now. Some of the Avengers believe that Wanda wouldn't do this. She wouldn't get Scott Lang and Hawkeye killed. Vision was destroyed. Other Avengers ended up in critical condition. But some of them are like, uh, hasn't she had trouble controlling her powers before? And her life's had a lot of misfortune, especially if you think about what happened to her kids. And Doctor Strange is like, I delivered those children. Did something happen to her kids? And Beast has to break the news that they weren't real, that she conjured them, and that Agatha Harkness realized it, so she erased them. Doctor Strange is pissed that no one told him about this. 
Tony Stark comes down out of nowhere and says, You're wrong. Wanda was with me today at the UN. She did not do this. We can't just accuse a teammate of this kind of terrorism. I need more than just a theory. Carol Danvers is like, If it's chaos magic, it can be reversed. And Doctor Strange says, There's no such thing as chaos magic. The reality-altering powers that she has, she was born with. Then she was orphaned. Then she became one of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Then she became an Avenger and faced danger every single day. And she never learned the mystic art. She was born with it. So she never learned how to control it, which means it controls her. And the task of coping with that, that immense power, is all-consuming. So if she lives a day that's a little bit too stressful and her imagination gets away from her, stuff is just going to happen. And Wanda's the only one not here. So they agree that they have to go find her. And they do. And she's playing house with her reanimated kids and Vision and Agatha Harkness's reanimated dead body. But Wanda's not about to let them take our kids from her again. So there's a battle. Wanda brings everyone's worst fears to life. But Doctor Strange uses the Eye of Agamotto to show her the truth and take her down. Doctor Strange tells them that her body's alive, but that her mind is gone. And down from above comes Magneto. He says, give me my daughter. He doesn't tell them where he's taking her, he just takes her. The Avengers embrace and disband, taking time to grieve their lost friends. Then, Wanda hears her brother Pietro racing toward the Swiss chalet where they stay to tell her about the news that the Avengers are accepting new members. Wanda hesitates at the thought of using her superpowers for others after having been so cruelly exploited by Magneto. Quicksilver convinces her that the Avengers will surely treat them as equals, and Wanda obliges her older brother's wishes. They're greeted in New York City by Tony Stark, who takes them to Avengers Mansion for their interview. And just as they're being accepted, Captain America returns from his battle with Zemo, and the Avengers welcome him with enthusiasm. Wanda and Pietro are impressed by their comradeship and are convinced that this is going to be a lot better than their experience with the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. And Tony Stark ushers them into an awaiting crowd of press and fans alike excited to accept the new Avengers team. Avengers Finale Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne arrive at Avengers Mansion. Tony hasn't bothered to clean it up and it's his mansion and they wonder what he plans to do with it. Janet calls the rubble beautiful and asks Hank what he's thinking, to which he replies, I don't want to say. And then we get a look from Janet that makes you wonder, did she set this shit off on purpose? One at a time, the Avengers arrive at this what they're calling a reunion, and they comfort each other by sharing favorite memories of Hawkeye. Janet and Hank walk in, and Carol's like, Janet, you haven't been returning my phone calls. I was worried. And Janet tells her that she was in recovery and sleeping a lot and just watching a lot of crappy TV. And quickly, Janet changes the topic by asking Jen Walters why she's not hooked up for the reunion. And Jen says that she thought it would be in bad taste, considering... You know. Tony Stark breaks the tension with an announcement. Tony tells him that because of the damage done to him, to his company, to the foundation that he created to fund the Avengers, that he's just not going to be able to repair this. The public humiliation, billions of dollars lost, thousands of jobs lost, his company and credibility have been compromised, and he has to think about all those lives who depend on him. And for that reason, he's not going to be able to finance the Avengers anymore. He's already begun filing the proper paperwork with the city of New York, he's sealed off the tunnels, and he's planning on declaring the property a landmark and leaving it as is. Carol Danvers is angry. She's angry that this is happening to them. She's angry at Wanda. Months have passed now, and it's all she's been feeling is hate for Wanda for what she's done to them. Janet chimes in that Wanda would have forgiven her if things were the other way around. Carol begins to argue, no, she wouldn't. Pietro chimes in out of nowhere. Yes, she would have. My sister loved you guys. And everyone's like, Pietro, where have you been? He says, I've been in a cabin in Greenland this whole time reading novels. I was there when this happened to you all. And they're like, no, you were here with us. And he says, no, that wasn't me. That had to have been my sister's doing. I wasn't here. They ask, do you know where Wanda is? And he says, she's with Magneto. He's taken her to Charles Xavier. And they say that he's trying to repair her mind with psychic techniques. They're trying to make her back into what she once was. But I doubt that she'll ever recover from this and what she's done to you guys here. I came here to apologize. He begins to admit a second reason for what he came here to say. But he can't do it and he takes off. With that, Carol really takes in the fact that the Avengers are done. And Jennifer Walters confirms that that's the only reason why she came here today, was to say that she was done. Hank Pym confesses that Janet and he are moving to Oxford, where they've accepted a fellowship, and that they're, like, kind of back together, trying to work it out. Falcon says he's retiring the wings, and Captain Britain says she's moving back to England. With that, they each take a moment to talk about their favorite Avengers adventure. And Cap makes a toast to Clint Barton, to Scott Lang, to The Vision, to Marvell, to Jack of Hearts, Swordsman, Mockingbird, Dr. Druid, Wizard, Two Gun Kid, Gilgamesh, Marina, Thunderstrike, and to all of them, 
Wanda included. The team takes one last trip up the steps in Avengers Mansion. To gather on the balcony and out on the street are all of their fans, everyone they were heroes to, everyone who appreciated them, thankful for the Avengers.